Hi. Hey, what? Hey. I'm Mike. I'm a dentist. What's up? Um, Mike. What's up? Today we're talking TMJ. Actually, we're not. That's a lie. We're talking TMD. TMJ just stands for temporomandibular joint. You've got two of those, one on each side. All right. It's, everybody has them. It's not a disorder. Temporomandibular disorder (TMD). That's what we're actually talking about. We're talking TMD. That's just a catch-all term for when you have a bunch of problems. Sad day. Such a sad, sad day in your life. For a bunch of different problems you can have with your jaw joint, your TMJ, or your jaw muscles. The truth is, most people don't actually have any problems with their TMJ, even when they think they do. Most of the issues with your jaw joint are very manageable with conservative treatment. You don't really need any big fancy interventions from dentists like me if you're on the struggle bus a little bit with your jaw joint. It's gonna be very manageable with some treatment at home. We'll get into that later later in the video. The much more common problem is to have issues with your jaw muscles. And I see a ton of patients all the time who think they have a toothache, but the real issue is jaw muscle pain. And that's always surprising for them to hear. But after I explain it and teach them how to take care of it at home, that's also usually quite manageable. It can get more complicated if it lasts for a longer period of time. I'm going to get into that in more detail later in the video. Do you need a night guard? A lot of the time, no you don't. Sometimes you do. So I'm going to frame the four sections of this video based on reasons why you would or wouldn't need a night guard. I'm going to deal with the four most common reasons patients I see would need a night guard. There are some other reasons, but this video is going to be plenty long as is. If we want to be a nerd about it, ask questions in the comments. In addition to talking about night guards, I'm gonna give you a lot of really good tips about what you can do at home to deal with all of these issues as well. Trust me, you're a lot more powerful than you think. I'm very big on preventative medicine, the whole ounce of prevention beats a pound of cure, all of that kind of stuff. That's why I'm making these videos. I see a lot of confused, anxious patients when I'm at work, and I want you to feel more confident that your oral health and your teeth are in good hands, and I want those hands to be your hands. So. Shove your hands in your mouth. <laughs> Step one to curing TMJ, shove hands in mouth. Don't actually put your hands in your mouth. I mean, you can if that's, if that's what you're into, but. Anyway, there will be chapter headings in the video description so that you can skip to whatever parts of the video are most relevant to you. I'm all about you having a very personalized YouTube dental experience, uh, but I am not your dentist. So disclaimer coming at ya. Pause the video, read this. I'm a dentist, I'm not your dentist. I can only teach so much online. You get confused, break your jaw. You're gonna have to talk to some other person about that. Not me, sorry. If you wanna learn more about why I'm doing all of this, I have a website. I'll put a YouTube card thing somewhere on the screen that you can click to go to my website and you can give me your email if you wanna. I do stand-up comedy, yada, yada, yada. All right, let's get into it, you Inuits. Okay, first reason we would consider wearing a guard of the night. A night guard. To protect your teeth from cracking or fracturing. All right, this is a very common thing that I see all the time, patients cracking teeth. A lot of times it happens at night. They wake up in the morning and they're like, ooh, that feels different to my tongue and there's a chunk of a tooth missing. Or they wake up in the middle of the night and they're like, ah! Because it's one of the worst pains ever to fracture a tooth down into a nerve. That, mm, that hurts. So I hear all the time, not fun. Patients are always asking me, you know, do I need a night guard? Do you need to wear a seatbelt? You know, most of the time when you get in your car, you're not going to get in a wreck. Every once in a while, you might, right? If you crack a tooth clenching your teeth at night and you have this warning like this could happen, it'd be like getting mad if you got flung through your windshield during a car crash, it's like, why didn't anyone tell me this was gonna happen? It's like, well, I mean, there was a probability that it was. We couldn't tell you that it was gonna happen this specific day and time. I ain't got no crystal ball. If you're the type of person that rides motorcycles, maybe you would like to live on the edge. You're not worried about wearing a night guard, that's fine. And I'm not saying every single person needs a night guard the same way every single person needs a seatbelt. But if I'm seeing a bunch of little cracks and a bunch of wear marks on your teeth 
and you've chipped other teeth in the past and you know you tell me oh yeah I have some sensitivity when I wake up in the morning sometimes and you're not always gonna have sensitivity when you wake up in the morning but like yeah my jaw is sore every once in a while like yeah you should probably consider wearing a night guard <laughs> you know what I mean like if you rolled up driving a car that had a bunch of dents in the side of the car and like a wheel was falling off and your windshield wipers didn't work I'd be like all right yeah if you're in that car you're probably you're probably gonna want to wear a seatbelt. something might Mm, something might be about to happen, you know? So sometimes you will get early warning signs that a tooth is cracking. If you start developing any kind of bite sensitivity where when you're chewing, you're like, oh, that, you get like a little twinge or something, right, when you're chewing. Don't ignore that. That can be a sign a tooth is cracking. If you start to develop cold sensitivity on a tooth that's kind of abnormal when you're drinking something cold, hopefully you're not chewing ice. I get patients that crack teeth chewing ice and they're, some of them are like, I didn't know I couldn't chew ice. Don't chew ice. It can very easily crack and fracture your teeth. Bad idea. Don't chew ice. But if cold things are causing sensitivity, now there's there's other reasons why you could have cold sensitivity with your teeth. So ideally, you want to get that evaluated by a dentist if uh, you develop some sort of new cold sensitivity in an area of the mouth. But especially if you have bite sensitivity coupled to cold sensitivity in an area of your mouth, could be a sign that a crack is starting on a tooth and you would want to put a night guard in before that crack gets bigger and worse. I'll be honest, this is kind of neat. I wouldn't have expected this based on what I learned in school, but I had a tooth back molar that was causing me quite a bit of cold sensitivity, and when I was chewing on it, I was getting twinges of bite sensitivity for a period of time, and I was like, oh great, am I gonna have to put a crown on this tooth? But I started wearing a night guard, and it all went away, which was pretty cool. I was like, hmm, that's neat. Wasn't really expecting that, but Tight. So sometimes if you have just a tooth that's under a lot of pressure, because teeth can get sensitive to bite and cold if they're under a lot of pressure from clenching, putting a night guard in can resolve that. If a crack gets too far along, you might have to put a crown on the tooth. That's like putting a hard hat over the tooth to protect it from cracking further. Or if it cracks too deep, you may have to have a root canal. That's when it's really painful, not the root canal, but the tooth will let you know if it's time for a root canal. It's gonna hurt a lot. You don't want that. And even worse, if the tooth cracks deeper underneath the gum tissue, you have to have the tooth removed. You're just gonna lose a tooth and replacing that with an implant or something like that can get pricey and time consuming. So you don't want that either. So the big thing I'm trying to get across here is sometimes it's really smart to wear a night guard, even if it doesn't hurt yet, because oftentimes once it starts hurting, it's too late. Sometimes you get lucky like me and it hurts a little bit and you get a warning sign, you start wearing a night guard and it feels better. I'll mention this really quick. The other reason that I started wearing a night guard, one of my front two teeth is actually a dental implant and dental implants don't hold up as well to clenching and grinding. I realized that one of the reasons why my tooth was being sensitive is I was clenching my teeth at night. I started having some jaw problems. That's another story. We'll talk about that later in the video. But if you clench and grind your teeth and you have dental implants, it's important to wear a night guard because dental implants do not handle the forces of clenching and grinding as well as our natural teeth do, right? They just don't hold up well to clenching and grinding. You can break down a dental implant the same way you can break down a tooth and you paid a lot of money for that implant and it took a long time to get it to heal into place there and fix it and you don't want to lose that tooth a second time so if you have implants definitely consider a night guard now a lot of patients ask me can they just get an over-the-counter night guard in this specific instance if you're just trying to protect the teeth from cracking you don't have any symptoms with your jaw joint you don't have any symptoms with your jaw muscles it's just the fact we want something in there stopping the teeth from clenching and grinding against each other to take some of the force and pressure off the teeth. I have had patients do well with over-the-counter night guards in those circumstances. Again, you gotta make sure that it's comfortable for your jaw joint. You gotta make sure it's comfortable for your jaw muscles. If you make an over-the-counter night guard, you wanna make sure you mold it so that it is even in your bite so that when you close down, left to right, front to back, all of your teeth are touching against guard very evenly. It feels very comfortable in your bite. Not everyone is going to be able to find an over-the-counter night guard that fits very well for them, that they're able to keep in and sleep with all night long. If you can find an over-the-counter night guard that fits comfortably, it seats comfortably, really it would probably be best to bring it into your dentist and say, hey, can you take a look at this and how it's fitting in my bite and just make sure everything's good with it. I've done that for patients in the past. I have no problem doing that for patients. You know, I understand not everybody can afford a custom night guard. Happy to do that, but honestly, 
that not custom molded guard isn't always gonna be comfortable and fit well and stay in all night for every patient. I'm not knocking it. If you're able to do it successfully and it's working for you and you're wearing that every night and it's protecting your teeth, tight. The second reason you should consider wearing a night guard to protect teeth from wearing down from grinding. This one is hard to convince people of. A lot of times it's, uh, it's guys that do this. Uh, women do it too, but I see a lot of older guys who have just pulverized their teeth. Uh, their smile's all crooked and jacked up and doesn't look, they're kind of like, mm. It sucks because the only way to fix it at that point involves seeing an orthodontist to move the teeth and then putting crowns on the teeth to repair all the damage that's been done and that gets pretty pricey and it takes a long time and a lot of patients you know look at that and they see the price tag associated with it and they're like well that's not gonna happen i'm just gonna have jacked up teeth forever i guess which sucks because it was all completely preventable someone just needed to talk to that person 20 years ago the reason it's so hard to convince guys to wear night guards when i start seeing wear on their teeth is it doesn't hurt a lot of the times right if you're just grinding your teeth against each other side to side at night it doesn't guarantee pain right a lot of guys won't actually develop jaw muscle pain that's just the people that do develop jaw muscle pain that's probably a good thing in a way because it's like a wake-up call they're like oh i should probably do something about this but if you grind your teeth and you don't develop jaw muscle pain, you're just gonna pulverize your teeth and every time I bring it up to you, you're gonna be like, nah, we'll look at it again in six months. And it's like, well, okay, but I'm not gonna really be able to tell that there's been a big change. But you know, you add up over five, 10, 15 years and all of a sudden your smile looks completely different. And then you're like, mm, man, my smile looks completely different all of a sudden. It's like, kind of all of a sudden, but it was happening for like the past 15 years and I tried to tell you about it, but whatever. And I'm not saying also, you know, not everyone who grinds their teeth is going to grind their teeth consistently over a 15 year period to cause that kind of damage. Sometimes people grind their teeth for shorter periods of time, they cause somewhere on the teeth and then that process stops. But again, grinding and clenching of your teeth isn't something that necessarily happens every single night. And it doesn't happen all night long either. You might do it for 10 or 15 minutes and that may only happen a couple times a week. We have some of that data based on sleep studies. You know, it just might not be that noticeable for you. So if you see your dentist and they're like, oh man, you got wear on this tooth and this tooth and there's wear over here and there's wear over here, you might wanna consider wearing a night guard. Again, whether it's an over-the-counter night guard or a custom-made night guard, there's limitations to the over-the-counter night guard. You wanna consider having something in between your teeth so that when you grind side to side, you're wearing down the night guard and not wearing down the teeth. You know, if you put an over-the-counter night guard in, you wear it for six months and you destroy the night guard, well, that might be a pretty good indication that you've been clenching and grinding your teeth, right? Anyway, food for thought. You can ignore everything I'm saying, but I don't have statistics on the exact number of patients. I haven't been able to find good data on like the number of patients that wear their teeth down significantly from grinding. If somebody wants to throw that in the comments, other dentists out there, go for it. But it's, it's a pretty common thing. I see a lot of uh, particularly middle-aged and older guys who have beaten the poo-poo out of their teeth <laughs> from grinding. It just, it happens a lot. And I wanna make it clear that wearing a night guard won't stop you from grinding, right? If you're having pain with your jaw muscles or you're having jaw joint issues, there's, I'll talk about that later, but <laughs> basically if you're, if you're a grinder, you're gonna keep being a grinder. So you want a durable guard of some sort in there protecting your teeth from those forces. And, and if you're one of those people who thinks, ah, I'll just let my teeth get destroyed and I'll fix them later and I saw that ad on TV that said teeth in a day and I'll just do that, I promise you that there is no such thing as insta dentistry uh, that's made up to a large extent. There's things that they're not telling you about the process of how you fix teeth, whether it's with orthodontics or with you know crowns or with implant surgeries. There's a lot of limitations on when those things are actually gonna work for people. And there's just a lot of caveats and the price tag is also very, very high. So a, a lot of those advertisements are leaving out very important details that are going to piss you off and frustrate you when you find them out later. Um, so I'm just trying to 
help you out on the front end. That's what this channel is about. Preventative medicine, making sure that you stop problems before they start. It's going to be good for your wallet. It's going to be good for your peace of mind. It's going to be good for your smile. I don't like how I just said that. You probably didn't either, and I'm okay with that. For your smile. We can agree that the way I said that was not good just then. Okay, for your smile. Now, wait a minute, I thought the dentistry advertisement on TV said instantaneous. <laughs> well, it's not. But I can take pictures on my Instagram instantaneously. Well, that, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Oh, I'm so sad. You know, to me, you know, popping this little grimy thing in every night, not a big deal, right? Now you, maybe you have a significant other that would hate you if you wore one of these things. I don't know your life. You know, me, I'm very alone, so not a problem for me. Oh, so sad. If you can't handle me at my worst, you don't deserve me at my best. <laughs> what, if, uh, what if I told you guys this right here, this right now, this, this was my best. <laughs> this is, wow, this guy sucks. <laughs> this is the best you got, a video about Night guards? Hmm. If you can't handle me at my worst, eat a bag of roosters, you freak. I don't know if I'm getting this across. It's just rough when I see people who've wrecked their teeth. They've got this crooked smile that just doesn't look right. You know, everybody, they had a nicer smile at one point. It's nice to have a nice smile. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I don't know. But maybe I'm being judgmental. You know, maybe you want to look like an old-timey prospector. Maybe that, uh builds character, right? I don't, I, maybe I'm just being a negative for no reason. You know, maybe that, maybe that stylish builds character. I just, I don't, I don't know how to convince the younger versions of these men to <laughs> wear night guards. I haven't figured out how to do it. Maybe if I was an attractive lady, <laughs> maybe that would, maybe that would help. I don't know. You hear that? Women? I don't mean to burden womankind with more of the patriarchy, but clearly it is your responsibility as females. <laughs> no, it's, it's obviously women's uh, responsibility to convince these young men to wear night guards so that they can remain sexually viable and attractive in old age, obviously. I mean, as a society, we're really supposed to expect men to take care of their own oral health for their own sake and uh, not as a means of increasing their sexual competitiveness? Come on. That, that seems absurd. Women, it's clearly your responsibility to fix all of us sad sack, never floss or brush or eat healthy, grinding our teeth, angry men folk. Truthfully though, guys, uh, if you look at the animal kingdom, you know, long canines are associated with aggression. And among primates, there is sexual dimorphism meaning that male monkeys have longer canines than female monkeys. So, I mean, you know, you want to be King Kong, get a pretty, you know, monkey lady for a date. You need to protect your canine game. That's what's wrong with you. No one loves you because your canines are flat. The canine, the third tooth over, is actually the first tooth that wears down when you grind your teeth because it's the longest rooted tooth in the mouth. It's meant to sustain the forces of the jaw moving laterally. You don't care, but it's a thing. No one loves you because of your flat teeth, you loser. That's my advertisement, what do you guys think? I mean, you know, alcohol commercials tell you you're unlovable because you're not fun enough when you drink beer and you're not sophisticated enough when you drink whiskey. So I don't think I'm the worst person in the world, right? I'm like, I'm like number three, maybe, you know? I'm the third, I'm the third worst person in the world because I'm making people feel bad about their crooked smiles. I'm sorry, that's not my... Bad, Michael, that's not the goal. All right, what's up? We are on reason number three that you would consider wearing a night guard. Uh, this right here, this is the meat of the video. You're gonna find out that was a bad pun later on in this video. No, this is the meat. This is the good stuff. This is the uh, filet mignon. All right, you're gonna to wanna to watch this. If, you're, if you found this YouTube video because you're having jaw pain, you think you have TMJ, which is really TMD, this is the part that you need to pay the most attention to. This is probably what's wrong with you. <laughs> There's a lot of things wrong with you, but this is, this is one of the things. I'm also, I'm gonna kind of break the fourth wall or whatever they say here and uh, 
get rid of the illusion that I'm, I'm doing this spontaneously. I have a script I wrote for this. It took me a while. And this part of the video, it's like 20, 20 pieces of paper long, and uh, it's gonna take me too long to try to say that and make it seem like it's spontaneous. This, is, this part of the video is called Mike Should Get a Teleprompter. So I could just, but I think there's something to me not just like reading off of a screen monotonously like, hi, and then you should do the thing with your jaw like this. I just think, you know, the way I'm talking right now is probably more entertaining, isn't it? Maybe? I don't know. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sort of read this. I'm gonna sort of go off on tangents. We're gonna try to get through this, communicate this information to you effectively, but also not have it take forever. So the third reason why you would consider wearing a night guard is to relieve short-term muscle pain, okay? This is very, very common. I have this conversation with at least one patient a week, at least. I see lots of patients who think they have a toothache or a cavity, and the real problem is jaw muscle pain. Biting down may hurt, but that's because this activates sore muscles, right? Pressing on individual teeth with a finger typically won't hurt, Drinking cold water typically won't hurt. If you typically have cold sensitive teeth, that's fine. A toothache will involve new cold sensitivity that lasts a longer period of time. So if you have a toothache issue combined with a jaw muscle issue, you need to resolve the toothache issue first, right? Get yourself out of pain with the tooth because that pain can lead to a cycle of you tightening the jaw muscles and, and the increasing anxiety and stress every time it acts up. We have to calm all of that down. We have to calm the tooth down before we can start let, letting the jaw muscles relax and heal. Sometimes it's just the muscles and not any teeth. Your dentist can help you figure that out. Hopefully that wasn't confusing. You can have jaw muscle issues. You can have tooth issues. You can have both of those at the same time as well. If you have both at the same time, you need to fix the tooth first, then we can fix the jaw muscles, right? So you might need a dentist's help to sort out exactly what's going on. So you should still see a dentist to be professionally evaluated, but I'm gonna try to demystify this for you a little bit. So clues that it's the jaw muscle and not a tooth. The pain or ache or discomfort comes and goes. Often, if you have an injured or dying nerve or an infection with a tooth, it's just going to keep getting worse, right? It's not gonna get better on its own. There are exceptions, but lots of times when I see patients with pain that keeps popping up for two or three days, easing up and coming back, we're dealing with a muscle issue, right? So if it comes and goes over a period of time, more likely the muscle than a tooth. Number two, you can press on your jaw muscle, the masseter, right, right here, this little sucker, which is a little bit sore for me right now, these jaw muscles back here. Master muscle, big, thick, whatever. <laughs> Is that fun if I slap myself? All right, if the jaw muscle, the masseter on one or both sides is sore or tender. Pushing on a muscle shouldn't normally hurt. Muscles get sore when they're overworked. Unless you just hit the gym, it shouldn't hurt to push on your arms and legs, right? If I start, this doesn't hurt, that doesn't hurt, this, right? This doesn't hurt, this feels fine. My thigh doesn't, anyway, but, but, this pretty sore. See, I clench my teeth a lot. It's a problem. So if you've been having dull, achy, throbby pain and pressing on your jaw muscle is tender, there's a good chance you're clenching your teeth. That could be happening at night. It could be happening during the day. It could be both, right? A lot of people clench their teeth subconsciously during the day. I mentioned the gym a second ago. A lot of people clench their teeth when they're lifting weights. It's something I used to do a fair bit, uh, but there's a little trick you can use with your tongue to stop that from happening. I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. Number three, it can get worse when you eat or you notice it more after eating, but you can press on individual teeth without pain and you don't have hot or cold sensitivity with the teeth. So if you're chewing on food and you notice, oh man, that pain is back, but then you can take your finger and you can... All right, and... You push on all your teeth and you kinda... Tap on all your teeth like a weirdo at your house or whatever, or your apartment. Uh, just a strange person in a room tapping his teeth in front of a camera. If you can do that uh, and nothing hurts, less likely that we've got a uh, infection or a crack or something like that with a tooth. Number four, these are, these are clues that it's the jaw muscles and not a tooth. Number four, it's worse when you wake up in the morning. If, it's, if there's a time that it, of day that it bothers you worth. 
if there's a time of day that it bothers you worse, right? If every morning you wake up and that toothache thing is back and then it goes away throughout the rest of the day and then you wake up the next morning it's back, you're probably clenching or grinding your teeth at night and that's why it hurts when you wake up in the morning. Number five, maybe in addition to the soreness that you've noticed with your masseter muscle, right? You have soreness up in your temporalis. That's this fan-shaped muscle. I'm sort of petting myself here on the, uh, I'm trying to look at the camera. <laughs> um, your temporalis, it's a big muscle that attaches to your master and fans out on the side of your head. If that's sore, uh, you might also get soreness down the sides of your neck and even into your shoulders, believe it or not. If you clench hard enough, if you're, uh, you, can, you can get sore uh, neck and shoulder muscles in addition to the jaw muscle being sore. So those are all hints that you might be clenching and that's what's causing your pain and it's not necessarily a toothache yet. We may not have cracked a tooth yet. All of that being said, once you feel like you're reasonably sure that it's muscle pain, you need to confirm that with your dentist. I can't diagnose you online. I cannot diagnose you online. No, uh, do not sue me for diagnosing you. There is no doctor-patient relationship here. Uh, I am abandoning you. <laughs> To, uh, to someone else. All right, so once you think you have muscle pain, uh, what can you do? For mild to moderate jaw muscle pain, you want to follow the MEAT protocol, M-E-A-T. That's what I was talking about for the, the pun earlier, the whole meat of this video thing. All right, so MEAT is an acronym from the physical therapy world. It stands for movement, exercise, it's like I'm doing pull-ups, but I'm not. My legs are doing this. Analgesics. Yay, pills. Pills. And treatment. So meat. This is a relatively newer way of approaching recovery with muscle injuries. The older protocol, RICE, uh, that stood for rest, ice, compression, and elevation. That still applies for more severe. That still applies for more severe muscle injuries. But uh, meat is a better road to recovery for mild to moderate muscle injuries. The key with meat is to do things up to just before the point they become painful function as best you can within your new range of motion without triggering pain. Step one of meat, that would be a movement. When your jaw hurts really bad, it can be scary. A lot of times it can jolt you with pain seemingly out of nowhere, and you get skittish about moving much at all. If opening hurts, you're scared to open. If closing down hurts, you're scared to close down all the way. Then there's some people who say to heck with it and move too fast, proceeding as if they don't have an injury, and then they wonder why it keeps coming back and hurting more. The key is to proceed gently, but to proceed nonetheless. Activity is needed, but listen to your body and do it at a reasonable pace for you. A couple of tips here. One, try to restrain your jaw when you yawn. Uh, use your hands gently under your chin if necessary. That's kind of funny, you're just like, it's a full blown yawn. Look out, men. He's yawning, restrain him. I don't know, like, just try to, instead of, you don't want to do that. Sorry to everyone who I just did the whole yawning is contagious thing to. Number two, no chewing gum. I had a patient who came in with severe uh, right masseter muscle pain. That pain had been going on and worsening for a couple months. He thought he had a major problem with the tooth because it often hurt worse when he ate and it ached in his jaw. Our nervous system isn't always able to perfectly discriminate pain sources. His teeth looked great visually on x-rays. They all tested healthy. I pressed on his jaw muscle and he felt it, you know, yowza, it hurt. And it doesn't always hurt really bad. <laughs> like his was pretty obvious. Sometimes it's just a little bit sore when you push on it. I started talking to him about all this stuff. I'm talking to you guys about uh, right now. When I mentioned chewing gum, he went, oh, right? Apparently, he had been working to quit smoking for the past couple months, so that's good, and was using chewing gum as a substitute. Classic, classic life. Life just pranks us all like that, right? You try to, you try to do something good and right and helpful, and life just turns around and kicks you in the bunghole. <laughs> oh, you wanna stop smoking? Well, I'm just gonna mess up your jaw then. <laughs> 
Thanks, life. This is, this is a good time for me to mention if you are interested in stopping smoking, I made a video to help with that. I'll put a link to that somewhere, probably on the screen or whatever, or down in the video description. I made a video about helping you stop smoking. I wish you great success in your new non-smoking life, buddy. I don't know about you guys, but I don't really like how this guy subtly called me buddy out of nowhere. Like we're just friends because he's making videos. Well, tough luck, pal. I already called you what I called you, so. We have a friendship now, deal with it. I should also mention at this point, uh, we have some uh, evidence. There was a, a review, a systemic review, that's where dentists look at a whole bunch of scientific studies of what is associated with clenching and grinding of the teeth. And there is somewhat of an association between alcohol consumption, smoking, both of those can increase uh, the likelihood that you grind your teeth. Um, also, if you have more than eight cups of coffee a day, that seems like a lot of coffee to me, but maybe I don't drink coffee. Maybe, <laughs> you're like, this guy talks kind of fast for somebody who doesn't drink coffee. I don't drink coffee. But um, if you drink eight cups of coffee a day, maybe that causes you to grind your teeth. So this systemic review, these were not clinical trials. They were cross-sectional and cohort studies. That means that we can't prove causality with these studies. So it's not guaranteed that drinking alcohol and smoking and drinking coffee cause you to grind your teeth, but there's some evidence that they might. Just all of your favorite vices, just give them up, and uh, you won't uh, you won't grind your teeth. You guys will you guys will do that because I've convinced you to, right? No, that's it's actually not how behavior change works. I'm also going to mention if you do want to improve your health habits, uh, a couple of books you should look into: Atomic Habits by James Clear. Start with that one. Then, if you're a real nerd, look up Nudge by uh, Richard Thaler and Cass Sunstein. That's only if you're a super nerd like me. Atomic Habits, James Clear, you're gonna live a healthier life. I can feel it already, feel it. Also, you, uh, Mark Manson, uh, Everything is Effed, A Book About Hope, that's another one I like a lot. So Atomic Habits, Mark Manson, Everything is Effed, and, uh, and then if you're a real nerd, Nudge, Richard Thaler, Cass Sunstein. <laughs> All right, so we wanna maintain movements within painless limits. That also involves, third thing here, switching to a soft food diet, all right? Soft food diet, what does that actually look like to be on a soft food diet? I don't know what I'm doing. What does a soft food diet actually look like? Practically speaking, fruits, peel and chop into small bites, puree or make smoothies. Fruits, peel and chop into small bites, puree or make smoothies. Vegetables, chop or mince raw vegetables into small bites. Even better, bake or boil to a softer consistency, or use a juice process. So we're chopping things up, we're peeling things, we're pureeing, we're juice processing. Meats, meat, meats as part of the meat protocol. Make sure they are tender and cut into small bites. Are you noticing a trend here? Small bites, bites, all right? Chop them up, nothing that you gotta chew a whole lot. Grains, hot cereals, couscous, quinoa, rice, pasta, thin whole grain toast is better than soft chewy breads and rolls. So if you toast something, it actually, even though it seems like that would make it crunchier, apparently that uh, it breaks down in your mouth easier than, uh, than a piece of bread that you gotta chew up more, right? So if you, if you chew on a roll, that's harder for you to crunch up with your jaw muscles than if you have a piece of toast. Did you know that? Avoid sticky, chewy foods. We already talked about gum. Avoid sticky, chewy foods. Rule of thumb. Here, this is a good rule of thumb. You're gonna, this is good. Rule of thumb. Do you know the origin of the term rule of thumb? It's not good. Look that up. Um, rule of thumb. Anything you can cut with the side of a plastic fork, all right? Not what you can stab with the prongs. I love this. Not, not what you can stab with the prongs of a plastic fork. Things that you can cut with the side of a plastic fork. That is soft enough for a soft food diet, right? You're you're like, I don't want to eat like I live in a nursing home. Well, you do, temporarily, all right? You're on the nursing home diet. Deal with it, all right? Until your jaw muscles feel better. Uh, uh, that's a soft food diet. Also, if I'm talking too fast or being too weird in this video and you're like, I can't follow this, I wrote an article on medium.com. I'm going to link in the video description. Blah, blah, blah. That goes over all these details as well. You can read if you're more of a reader type person. Also, while we are on the topic of diet, I would like to recommend a couple more books. If you want to avoid dental cavities, it's called More Chocolate, No Cavities. If you read that one and like it, and you want to be a super dental nerd, just like, you're just like, I can't get enough 
of being healthy when it comes to my teeth. If that's your vibe, the dental diet. So if you don't like books and you're like, I just want to listen to a podcast, you can check out Dr. Mark Hyman's Doctor's Pharmacy podcast. That's going to give you a lot of health advice as far as eating. And you can also get his book, Food, What the Heck Should I Eat? I've read all three of those. Start with more chocolate, no cavities. You can graduate to the other ones if you really want to learn how to eat nutritious things for a healthy mind and body and spirit or whatever. And if you really love books, if you're just like, books, I love books. Uh, I have a recommended books section on my website, anotherlazymillennial.com. Anotherlazymillennial.com. Recommended books if you like reading. Sidebar there. Okay. Also, if you don't want to read any of those books, I made a video about how to never get a cavity. That's on my channel. You can watch that video instead if you'd rather watch a video of me again. All right, so that pretty well covers uh, the movement, the M of meat. We're moving on to the E of meat, exercise. All right, we're going to... Hmm. Exercise number one. This is tongue baby cobra. What the heck does that mean? If you put the, your tongue to the roof of your mouth, like if you were gonna make an N sound, like mm, you don't actually have to make the sound, but make the sound quick so you know where your tongue goes when you make the sound. All right, so you know where your tongue goes now, right? You go mm. If you just put your tongue up there, automatically relaxes your jaw muscles, drops your teeth apart, you can't clench your teeth. It's like magic. Now you gotta be careful. You don't wanna press your tongue hard to the roof of your mouth. You don't wanna be like, you know, you're not trying to do, you're not trying to shove through the roof of your mouth, okay? Because then you're actually gonna end up still tensing the jaw muscles in your face and even like your neck and shoulders and stuff. Just very lightly, very gently, very, uh, very uh, calmly, just lightly. Just putting your tongue in the roof of your mouth. Very gentle, very subtle, very kind to yourself, right? Love your body. Okay. This is a very simple exercise. You're basically just trying to replace the habit of clenching your teeth during the day with this new habit of putting your tongue to the roof of your mouth, right? Because if you're clenching, a lot of people clench their teeth subconsciously throughout the day. If you get stressed, if, you know, I mean, think about like, if somebody pisses you off at work, you might like sort of like, hmm, you know, clench your fist, you know? You ever been like mad at somebody and you're just sitting there like, I just wanna, your like fist is down by your pockets, but you're like, I want to, mm, I want my fist to connect with this person's face, you know, and you're kind of squeezing. You do that with your jaw muscles a lot too, without realizing it. And you do it, you know, just whenever you're stressed about anything or you're focused on something. So instead, tongue to the roof of the mouth. And I'm doing it right, is this, and I'm doing it right, is this how I tell my tongue? My tongue is going to get jacked, okay? My tongue is going to be so strong, you didn't even believe it. We're not trying to do tongue power lifting, right? This is tongue yoga. It's just breathing and calmness and, uh, and all that. No, I've, I've actually, uh, I use the whole baby cobra analogy because I've been doing yoga for a couple years now. Uh, I'm an amateur, but uh, I got started on YouTube. That's part of their foot. Another one of those things that gave me an idea for these videos. I was like, if they can teach yoga on YouTube, why can't I teach dentistry on YouTube? So uh, I did. I did the. I did yoga with Adrian, and now I, I like uh, breathe and flow with uh, this uh, couple, uh, Bree and Flo. I don't know how his name is Flo, but he's got tattoos all over his body, and he looks like the kind of person who could pull off a name like Flo. So he's named Flo, and her name's Bree. So they came up with this breathe and flow. They make great videos. They're very. They seem like nice people. I shouldn't poke fun at his name. I'm a weirdo too. Anyway, I also found this channel, uh, Man Flow Yoga, and he teaches you how to do yoga uh, as a guy, because we're not as flexible as lady people are. So, you know, you can try that if you want to be a yogi man. Hey, what's happening, boo boo? What's happening, boo boo? So yeah, you can check out all those YouTube channels. If you want to become a yogist, or a yoganary. I'm a young yoganeer myself. Come a yogater. One thing I'm learning in my time as a young yoganeer is that uh, you can build strength in ways that don't involve trying to lift as much weight as possible or run as fast as possible. Like I was a swimmer in college. Yoga hyper focuses you on technique and it slows you down. Breathing is a big thing in yoga. The whole it's the whole thing is a breathing exercise to try to help quiet the mind, right? Which is just, it's a very different perspective from the competitive attitude I had back when I swam. Why am I talking about all this? 
because, because if you want to resolve the muscle pain that you're having right now, if you're having acute muscle pain from clenching and grinding, we have to tweak your mind a little bit and you're, we need to initiate a behavior change around this clenching behavior. There needs to be a mindset shift. And I honestly, I think yoga is a very helpful practice, especially for a lot of people in uh, modern American, you know, society where it's just like run, 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 go, 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 harder, 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 faster, faster, faster. And yoga's like, no, dude, just, hmm. And that's what I'm trying to do with your jaw muscles. So anyway, yeah, this, this is important for us folks uh, who clench and grind our teeth. Yes, I am one of you. Slowing down our breathing, the goal being about six breaths a minute in and out slowly, gently over a course of about 10 seconds for a single breath, right? So think about that. That's If that just bugged the heck out of you sitting there and watching me do that, just realize like, okay, that's, you need to be able to shift into that gear and not get agitated throughout the day. And if that's like really hard for you to do and you have these jaw muscle issues, that might be part of why you have these jaw muscle issues is because you're always like this, you know, and we need you to be like, <sighs> so we got to work on that. So yeah, if you never tried it before, check out some yoga on YouTube, try out some guided meditations. I do yoga twice a week in the morning before I jump into writing scripts for videos or filming for videos or editing videos or writing jokes. Have I mentioned I do stand-up comedy? You guys are like, this guy's not funny, he sucks. Trust me, I don't. Well, maybe I do, but I'm funny, okay? On stage, I realize that this is not that entertaining, but it's better than what you're gonna get at most dental offices, so suck it. <laughs> Um, you can subscribe to my channel or check out my website to learn more about that. Anyway, there's this book I read called Atomic Habits by James Clear. I get his emails every week now along with like a million other people. They're great emails. He follows his own advice on the psychology of behavior change to trick me into reading his emails and I always read them and I enjoy it. It's almost like he's genuinely being a nice person and striving to improve the world as best he can. It's so frustrating. He's so crafty. But anyway, uh, James Clear talks about how we don't rise to the level of our goals, right? We fall to the level of our systems. We don't rise to the level of our goals, we fall to the level of our systems. So I found that to be very true in my life. Two days at the gym, two days of yoga, and a walk or a run each week are part of my system to stay on track, right? You can watch this video, but doing yoga once a week is going to be a more consistent cue to remind you about things like posture, slowing your breathing down, muscle tone awareness. You might be surprised by how it can contribute to reducing jaw muscle pain. Now, I can't prove any of that with a controlled scientific clinical trial, but I still think it's worth your consideration, right? So that may have seemed like a whole lot of stuff for me to talk about. Basically, I'm saying, Behavior change is about putting systems in place to remind you about the positive behavior you're trying to incorporate into your life. Atomic Habits by James Clear, it's a great book, you should read it. But watching this video, if you're having jaw muscle pain consistently, isn't gonna be enough to fix your jaw muscle pain. We are going to have to make these behavior modifications and you're gonna have to find effective ways for you to do that in your life. So it goes beyond this video, that's what I'm trying to get to. I'm gonna give you the information you need, the logical information you need, but if you actually wanna make the change, we have to tap into your emotions and figure out how those behavior changes are going to give you positive emotions that reinforce those behavior changes in your life. <laughs> what is this guy talking about? There is another jaw muscle relaxation technique that you can use instead of tongue baby cobra. This one, what you do is you blow little puffs of air out between your lips, sort of uh, like this. Like if you were, like if you were making like a B or a P sound, you know, like b b or. P. You know, next time you're at work and uh, someone steals your stapler from your cubicle and you're feeling frustrated, you know, just uh, just uh, just do some of that. You probably probably won't go crazy or anything. Uh, cause all of your coworkers to think you're a nutcase, but um, it'll be 
fine. The reason why you would do that exercise is there's a risk, as I mentioned earlier, if you're pressing too hard with your tongue, when you're doing the tongue baby cobra thing, the end noise, you know, you could tense up the jaw muscles still if you're pressing too hard. For me, I do tongue baby cobra all the time, and it's just, I know that people, based on what I know psychologically about behavior change, People are more likely to engage in a behavior when it's easy and it's appealing and to me it's a lot simpler for me to subtly place my tongue through from my mouth than it is for me to sit there and go on. It's just I'm more likely to do tongue baby cobra, that's what I stick with, but if you want to blow little puffs. Be a puff daddy, you know what I mean? I'm not trying to stop you, I'm not trying to slow you down. Be a, be a power puff girl, right? That's, that's a good thing, that's a strong, it's a strong thing to be. Two other exercises, when you're having jaw muscle pain, two other exercises that you can use. One, if your jaw muscles are really feeling tense, really tight, you're having a hard time opening, lightly stretching the jaw can be useful. So to do that, normal person's jaw, I'm gonna do something weird here. You wanna be able to fit three fingers between your teeth if you open, right? So, I, it's like I'm using a really big gun. <laughs> huh? Uh, this isn't weird, right? Uh huh. So uh, you want to be able to fit, fit three fingers in there. A lot of times if your jaw muscles are tense, you might not be able to do that. So what you do is you take a uh, stack of tongue depressors, all right? Imagine I have a stack of tongue depressors and you put those in between your teeth and you add tongue depressors until you feel a light stretch. Okay, no pain, just a light stretch. You leave those tongue depressors in for about 10 to 20 seconds and you do that about six times a day. Don't you feel like a fool? That's okay, that's good. All right, so besides the tongue depressor, stretch another jaw exercise you can do throughout the day to try to increase your range of motion if your jaw muscles are tight. We're trying to get some movement within a painless range, that's our goal. You can do tongue baby cobra with an opening exercise. You're gonna put your tongue to the roof of your mouth the same way you would when you're just trying to relax your jaw muscles, and then you're going to open until you feel a light stretch, okay? Again, no pain, just a light stretch. Is any of that making you guys uncomfortable? It makes me uncomfortable. All right. So you can do that jaw rotation exercise, try to get, you know, 10 or 20 reps, you know, bro, just trying to get those reps in. No, again, it's about nice and easy, gentle. You're not trying to overwork anything or fatigue anything. You're just trying to very gently stretch open the jaw muscles, get that range of motion back. So we've covered, uh, we've covered movement, we've covered exercises. The third part of meet, A, the A team. Analgesics, it's a fancy word for, uh, for pain medications. Gesix of the anus for, <laughs> I'll take Gesix of the anus for 1200. Trebek, that's not even a category. What is he talking about? Jap anus relations for, you, you guys know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean. So step three, analgesics, what pills can be taken to help with jaw muscle pain, acute, short-term jaw muscle pain. So our goal is to manage with over-the-counter pain medications, all right? You may have heard of the acronym NSAIDs, that stands for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, ibuprofen, which is Advil or Motrin, or naproxen, which is Aleve. You can use generics of these medications, you don't have to use the name brands. Those can be useful as long as it is safe for you to take these meds, follow dosing instructions, and be consistent with your dosing schedule on an as-needed basis. The reason you want to use NSAIDs as first-line treatment for this in the short term is because muscle pain is inflammatory pain and NSAIDs are anti-inflammatories. But you can supplement NSAIDs with acetaminophen, that's the generic of Tylenol. A lot of dentists are still prescribing muscle relaxers for jaw pain. Based on recommendations and research from a dentist I trust, who has worked for some 40 plus years in an orofacial pain clinic. I personally am no longer prescribing muscle relaxers for patients with jaw muscle pain. We don't have evidence that it works. These meds can cause dependency, so you can't be on them for very long. You're better off with ibuprofen. Now, if any other dentists want to rip me a new one over this in the comments, uh, feel free. I'm always opening. <laughs> I'm always open. <laughs> rip me a new one. I'm always opening. Freudian slip. Uh, <laughs> 
No, uh, rip me a new one in the comments. I'm always open to learning how stupid I am. I'm all for it. Uh, if you can show me research that proves me wrong on this, but for now, no muscle relaxes for you. What about opioids and narcotic painkillers for jaw muscle pain? Also, no, opioids only treat symptoms, right? They mask problems, they numb you, right? They're a numbing medication. They work on the brain, right? On the nervous system up here. They don't do anything to the muscle down here. So the whole point of meat uh, is to get you moving and exercising again within painless limits. Again, painless limits. If you can't feel pain, you can't gently work your way back to health. It's kind of important, right? Sure, I could dope you up and you could crunch and munch on nachos, but is that really a good idea? <laughs> you know, if you just injure the tissues further, right? If you're just, if you just numb the muscle and then you beat it up worse, I didn't really help you. We have evidence that it is very important to help patients manage and recover from acute jaw pain due to joint injury or muscle strain or sprain within a short time period. It tends to become a chronic pain problem if it persists beyond one month. So if I just give you opioids and it make you feel better during that month because you're all doped up and you keep injuring the tissues because you don't have a sense of what's wrong up there, we just probably created a chronic problem, all right? Well, two chronic problems. One, you might be edging towards dependency on opioids because you're gonna have to be taking them more consistently. And two, we've just continued injuring your jaw muscle and maybe your joint as well. And now it's gonna be harder to heal that tissue because we've made it worse. So if I don't teach you how to properly nurse your way back to health, if I just give you pain pills instead of coaching you, and empowering you to recover with new habits at home, there is a much greater chance this will be turning into a chronic pain you will be dealing with for an extended period of time, okay? Years, perhaps forever. So we don't want that, right? It can interfere with basic functions like eating and talking for years to come. It's not great to walk around with pain in your face all the time, right? You know, you guys have heard of the term RBF. This is gonna, if you have constant jaw muscle pain, whether you're a man or woman or whatever, you're gonna have a, a worse case of RBF because you're gonna be like, ah, this hurts. What are you looking at? My face is in pain, man. You know, you don't wanna be like that. So for the vast majority of these jaw muscle pains, it's ibuprofen and acetaminophen. And if you need something more than that, you need something more than this YouTube video, get your butt to a dentist. Ideally one who specializes in orofacial pain and or temporomandibular disorders. Watch this video and you're trying to follow this advice and it's not working for you, you need to get in to see a dentist, all right? Ideally sooner rather than later, because again, if that pain goes on for more than a few weeks, we could have a serious problem, all right? And I don't want you to have a serious problem, right? So just be aware of that. Also, you do not need antibiotics, okay? Your jaw muscle is not infected. You don't need antibiotics. Yes, people ask for antibiotics. They're like, I don't feel like you did anything because you didn't give me any antibiotics. Well, you don't, you don't need them, but I want them. <laughs> you don't need them. So no, you do not need antibiotics to fix Jaw muscle pain. I guess if you don't like that, fire me from my job. I don't care anymore. All right, uh, step four in the meat treat, mint, uh, <laughs> treatment. That is what it is. Uh, that's, a, that's, how did I not see that coming? Movement, exercise, analgesics, treatment. Uh, we've, we've come a long way, friends. We're in the home stretch here. So uh, at home, you can massage your jaw muscles, right? That sounds fun, Ooh, a massage. For guidance on how to uh, massage your jaw, I'm gonna link to a physical therapy YouTube video from a physical therapy channel on YouTube that I think is helpful. I can't remember their names right now. It's Bob and something, and I'm sorry to something for forgetting your name, but they're very popular, these physical therapists on YouTube, and I'm gonna link to their video. They're gonna talk about different jaw muscle massages you can do. You can look up, you know, why deep tissue massage and Swedish style massage uh, can help with muscle pain in other places online. This video is long enough. You know, when I get jaw muscle pain, I often feel relief from compressing trigger points in the jaw muscle. I kind of picked up on that uh, back when I swam. Uh, in college, just getting massage in my back and shoulders, finding those trigger points. You can actually do that yourself too if you just like lay on a tennis ball or a baseball or something like that. 
you can look that up online. But this is this is not uh, professional medical advice. This is not professional medical advice. But if you're looking for um, some relief from jaw muscle pain, personally, just from my own personal experience with my own jaw muscle pain, I have found that to provide some relief to just you know compress trigger points in the jaw muscle and trying to get muscle release and relaxation that way. So. If you're into that, if you feel comfortable, watch the video, do a little more research online. You know, you can do some jaw muscle massage for yourself at home, that can be helpful. So here's the other thing, I said this was gonna be a video about night guards, right? That's why some of you are here, you're like, should I get a night guard, should I not? What can a night guard do for jaw muscle pain? So for jaw muscle pain, for short-term jaw muscle pain specifically, you're gonna get a type of night guard from a dentist called an anterior deprogrammer. As I mentioned earlier in the video, in general, night guards will not stop you from clenching and grinding your teeth, all right? Not long-term anyway. There is some evidence that these night guards, these anterior deprogrammers, which is a type of small guard that you put just in between your anterior teeth, props you open, you know how we were talking about the fingers earlier. Basically, you have a night guard that just does that, just props you open, you rest on your front teeth so that your back teeth do not touch. We have some evidence that in the short term, you know, a few weeks time period, that can decrease muscle activity in the masseter, okay? We have that evidence from sleep studies. That can be helpful if you have acute jaw muscle pain, right? If you have jaw muscles that are really irritated, really hot, really inflamed, and you can put something in your mouth at night that decreases the tension in those jaw muscles, that can be helpful short term, right? These are not appliances that are recommended for long-term use in the vast majority of cases. Um, there can be some consequences of that if you wear these long-term where if you've propped open your front teeth and your back teeth aren't touching, the back teeth can move and shift over time so that when you bite down, your back teeth hit prematurely. Uh, when you're closing, you develop what's called an anterior open bite. It's a whole thing. So you don't wanna wear these long-term generally. You wanna wear this until you get out of that acute jaw muscle pain, get the jaw muscles calmed down, and then you wanna to convert to a full coverage night guard, which is what we talked about earlier, where it covers all the teeth and even though you're gonna clench and grind, you're gonna be protecting the teeth while wearing that guard. So let me just, oh yeah, the other thing, you can try an over-the-counter guard if you can't afford to see a dentist or if it's taking a while to get an appointment with a dentist while you're dealing with this. These are usually not great long-term fits and solutions, as I mentioned earlier. Although I do have some patients who honestly have had really good results wearing over-the-counter night guards. They've done well with them, but they don't work a lot of the time. But these, again, they're not a cure for the muscle problem. They're more, if you're wearing it long-term, that's only to protect your teeth. Over-the-counter guards for short-term short muscle problems. Um, maybe, you can try it. Ideally, you would want something that only covers the front teeth when you close so your back teeth don't touch. I've looked online, I haven't been able to find a consumer facing product that you could like purchase on Amazon where it would be easy for you to make something like that, but theoretically you could probably just mold an over-the-counter guard and cut off the back ends of it. So again, this is not professional medical advice technically, this is not me telling you to do this as a physician, this is just uh, me floating an idea out there and there's no evidence behind it. So there, I, I, I'm, this is for people who cannot afford to see a dentist and are having significant short-term muscle pain. And it's probably better than nothing. If the point is, if it makes it worse, stop doing it. Okay. If it makes it better, cool. Still go see a dentist. All right. Don't just trust a YouTube video for how you take care of yourself. But I'm assuming some of you are watching this video and you're in a lot of pain right now and you maybe can't afford to see a dentist because you're watching YouTube videos about dentistry. There's gonna be some people that are in that situation. I'm still trying to help you if I can. Yes, if you have short-term muscle pain, I think I've made it clear. You want a guard that only fits on your front teeth. You can try wearing that for a few weeks, see if that helps calm down the muscle at night. Make sure you're following the other advice in the M, E, and A part of meat at the same time. So if I know I've given you guys so much information and I'm talking fast and I'm all over the place, if any of this is not making sense, again, I wrote all of this down in what I think is a pretty understandable uh, way, um, organized way in an article on medium.com that's linked in the video description. So you have that as a resource as well. And feel free to ask questions in the comments. I'll get to people as much as I can. 
So now to uh, prove to all of you that I'm not making all this bull hockey up and uh, that some of the stuff I'm telling you can actually be helpful and resolve an issue, I'm going to recount an episode I had recently where I had a very significant amount of jaw muscle pain that was not fun. Um, but I followed some of this advice and it slowly got better. So I'm going to tell you that little uh, story. It's story time. That way you can be like, oh, this guy actually is, uh, is not full of, full of garbaggio. Like I said earlier in the video, I wear a night guard every night. I have had a number of episodes over the years of having jaw muscle pain. I had one not too long ago and I documented everything that happened with that because I was like, oh, I was, you know, I was planning on making this video and I was like, this would be good to explain to people what I went through and how long it took to heal and feel better and what it felt like when it was happening. Some of that might be relatable for some of you uh, watching this video. And you might be like, well, why does it get worse sometimes? You know, why does it hurt and then come back? You know, one, one of the things that can cause you to clench and grind your teeth is stress. Um, and I know that's a very vague term to be using, but there's a lot of truth to that. You know, like I said, if, if something's stressing you out, you may kind of clench your fist, you may grit your teeth, and you may do that all very subconsciously. You're not even aware that you're doing it, but you're doing it. Anyway, I was having kind of a rough go of things at work for a while, and uh, I, was, I was definitely stressed, and just one day, my jaw muscle decided to say, hey buddy, cut it out. You're making us hurt. Uh, so anyway, this is that. This is on April 21st. I wrote, uh, remember the panicked feeling you had when your jaw muscle felt that intense, sharp jolt of pain when you were chewing. Even as a dentist, I was like, WTF just happened, you know, right? Like that's, that's how patients feel. That's how you feel. I get it. You're like, what the heck was what? This hurts so much. And that's how you, why you think it's a toothache, right? You have this fear of the unknown. Like I knew it was likely a muscle problem when it happened. But if you don't realize that, you're like, oh man, what the heck is going on here? I started doing the slow breathing exercises, started doing massage right away. Um, I knew how to manage this. April 21st, I started hearing uh, crepitus in my right jaw joint. That had been new for me. Crepitus, it's like a crackly, crinkly noise coming from the jaw joint when you open. I don't really have it very much anymore but it started that day. So it was like, okay, like my jaw muscle hurt like crazy when I bit down into this tortilla chip. And then I started hearing this issue with my jaw joint. I'm like, oh man, I really screwed this up. So it was very tight all of a sudden. I had sharp pain uh, when I was eating tortilla chips. Um, it was tight as I opened and there was pain on the downstroke chewing motion. I massaged it, I pressed into it uh, with my fingertips and palm. Uh, pressure points on the masseter muscle. My right neck and uh, my trapezius muscle were triggering as well, uh, very tight and sore. I'd had a stressful day uh, at work and I was likely clenching a lot and I'd had several stressful days in the weeks leading up to that. Yeah, so I had a sharp pain when closing on the chewing stroke with the right masseter and it was very sore to palpate. Those are all the notes from April 21st. So then the morning of April 24th, uh, it had been feeling better for a day, but I must have clenched last night because it was more sore when I woke up in the morning and it jolted me again. Although this one, you know, like that sharp pain was much less painful than a few days ago. For that, I kept yawning, but tried to be cognizant of not opening too wide. For 25, you guys are like, man, this guy really documented all this. You know, I just, I wanted to give you an example of what this would be like potentially for you. So. 425 jolted me again on the right side, still not near as bad as the first time it happened uh, as I was opening to eat a spoonful of oatmeal. Uh, I stopped and closed right away. I massaged the muscle, it was quite painful and sore. I opened gingerly and it jolted me slightly as I got wide. More crepitus, that crackling and uh, popping noise in the jaw joint. It didn't do it anymore after this, the second time I opened wide and closed. On 428, the right side jaw uh, twinged on me again in the morning twice uh, right when I woke up upon opening but not as bad as last week 511 it jolted me again on opening on the right side not terrible but some pain the right jaw triggered three more times eating lunch sharper pain more pain on closing and then two more times later that day that was all on 511 512 jaw jolted me sharp pain when I yawned, when I woke up in the morning, quite sore in the master muscle, not as bad as yesterday, triggered at lunch two, 
then jolted me hard when I was flossing my teeth at night. 5.13, jaw jolted slightly when I woke up and yawned. Uh, not, not really, I mean, the yawning is getting me a lot here. On 5.13, still my jaw, got that sharp pain in my jaw when I was opening or closing about six more times between then. Uh, 5.14, my jaw uh, jolted about five or six more times in the morning, all on the right side, fairly sore, but not as much when, it's, when it started. Two more times around 4 p.m. The most sore spot is pressing on the jawbone between the tragus of the ear, right in front of the earlobe. This is posterior to the masseter. So like right here is, right here is where it was the source for me at that point. So that all, that again, I don't know how many of you paid attention to that. It all started on April 21st and it was more or less resolved by the 14th of May, right? So, you know, it took about three weeks, right? A little over three weeks for me to get this feeling more or less normal to the point where it wasn't giving me that sharp jolting pain on a regular basis just from opening or yawning or eating. And I was doing, you know, some of those jaw muscle stretches and exercises, and I was being more cognizant about what I was eating, softer foods, shorter chewing strokes, really just trying to relax my jaw muscles throughout the day, not tense up as much, but you know, work was still stressful and I still struggled with it for a while. So again, this is relatable. Um, if you start having these symptoms, it's not necessarily a toothache. And if you follow the advice in this video, you can resolve it, but it might take a few weeks. You're gonna have to be patient. Alrighty, welcome to day two. I mean, you guys don't know it's day two because I edited this together or whatever, but it's day two. I didn't get this whole thing filmed yesterday. So day two, we're finishing this video. All right, here we go. Uh, so I just told you uh, that little story about, you know, my jaw being messed up for a little while. Now I want to tell you another story. The reason I'm making this video is I see a lot of patients for these problems and it takes me a long time to convince them why they're having these problems. A lot of times they get confused by or don't trust what I'm saying. And I do promise that I don't talk this fast when I'm talking to patients in a clinical environment at, at the office. I slow down a lot. I give them space to ask questions. I don't like blah, 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 the whole time because I understand that I'm talking like this because it's a long video and you guys can rewind it if you want to. And there's an article you can read that's gonna re-explain all this that's in the video description. So you, you guys get it, all right. Also, uh, I don't get paid anything to explain these things or to counsel patients on how to solve these problems. So dental offices I work at don't exactly want me spending time talking patients through this stuff because it's not considered productive. That has the unfortunate side effect of biasing doctors toward treatments that are reimbursable, meaning pills and procedures and appliances like night guards. But if that's not what you really need, if it's not what's indicated, and sometimes those things are indicated, but they're not always indicated, but if it's not indicated, that's hardly helpful. I am by no means a TMD specialist. I'm a regular old average uh, Joe Schmo general dentist. I don't want to misrepresent myself here, but I've spent a lot of time studying temporomandibular disorders and I've seen a lot of patients with various problems with the jaw joints and muscles. Uh, I know a thing or two. So I saw a woman who had been referred to a TMD specialist for chronic jaw pain and he put her on muscle relaxers that had side effects that she didn't like at all and they didn't help with her jaw pain. So when she went back to the TMD specialist and told him this, uh, he said that there was nothing else he could do. And he told her, quote, she grinds her teeth because she's a woman and she'll just have to deal with the pain. That's what she told me. Now, first of all, uh, I think we can all rule out that her being a woman is the cause of her jaw pain, right? There's, uh, there's lots of women that go through life without any jaw pain whatsoever, do just fine. So clearly it can't just be being a woman that causes jaw pain. Um, that being said, stress and anxiety and depression are more common and experienced more acutely by women compared to men in general. Okay, that doesn't mean exclusively, but in general that the research bear, bears that out. Um, we have personality research that demonstrates women are on average more neurotic than men. Um, of course, there are always exceptions. 
I, for example, uh, am incredibly neurotic. It's one of my defining features. <laughs> you know, I worry about everything. I analyze everything and break it down into its component parts fairly automatically. I'm prone to anxiety that has been paralyzing at times. I've had several major depressive episodes in my life that have lasted many months and in some cases years. As I detailed earlier in the video, I've had my own, you know, painful struggles with TMD issues occasionally throughout the years. And as far as I know, I'm not a lady. So men are perfectly capable of having medical problems brought on by excessive chronic stress the same way women are. We can do it. So telling a woman she has TMD because she's a woman is like telling a man he's balding because he's a man. Sure, it's partially true, but there's no useful advice there. You're just tossing a half-baked insult at an entire gender for no reason. Poor bedside manner, we can do better. Also, we have better treatments for chronic jaw pain than we do for male pattern baldness. And what I'm trying to say here is we have to be able to have medical discussions about differences between men and women without it turning into an insult, right? I mean, there's there are general trends, there are general differences in the medical problems that are experienced by men and women, and there are lots of similarities as well. And we should be able to talk about that because that helps communicate between patients and physicians how to better care for an individual. And every individual is unique and you do have to practice individualized medicine, but we still have to pay attention to those general trends. And I know there's like a lot of people who don't like that, don't like talking about the differences between men and women. But again, I'm just talking in general. Like I'll give you another example. Uh, when I was in college, I was a swimmer and we would always take a training trip down to Florida. And I remember we went uh, to this pool and we were in the gym after practice and there was this jacked uh, middle-aged woman who was just like crushing weight in the, the gym. And I was just like, man, who the heck was that? Apparently it was Dara Torres who won uh, an Olympic medal at the age of, I believe, 40. Uh, she, she'd, she'd already had a child and like, she, she won, an, I think, a silver medal in the 50 meter freestyle at age 40. That's insane, that's crazy. And she was way faster in a pool than I ever was. Uh, so, you know, there's always exceptions just because men in general, you know, if you look at swimming times are faster than women, there's plenty of women that could kick my butt in a pool all day, every day. So we need to be able to have the discussions about the differences between men and women because it can be important to having targeted medical care that's going to help that individual without it being insulting. You know, it should never be like, you know, you're a guy and that's why you have this problem and it's there's something wrong with your gender. You're a lady and that's why you have this problem. There's something wrong with your gender. No, we all have medical problems and that doesn't mean there's something wrong with you personally or with your gender or anything else. It's just we got to be able to have a frank discussion about it in order to fix the problem or at least attempt to. I think I'm being clear with what I mean there, right? If you disagree, yell at me in the comments section. Rawr. Get angry, cancel me. All right, cool. All right, so back to the story. Uh, so I saw this woman who had had her gender insulted and I explained some of the things I'm trying to explain to you. And I told her uh, she wasn't crazy and that there were logical reasons and causes for why she was experiencing the jaw pain uh, that she was. You know, she was very thankful for the explanation. She kept saying how that all makes so much sense and how it made her feel so much better. And you're thinking like, just words? Words made her feel better? Um, you know, just an explanation makes someone feel better. Hmm, uh, to an extent, sometimes, yeah, it can. You know, I'm gonna recommend another book now. Uh, this is one of my faves. Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers by Robert Sapolsky. So Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers, it's all about stress and how the stress basically wrecks your body when it's chronic. It helped me understand a lot more about uh, what my dental patients are going through for all kinds of reasons. It helped me sort out some serious health problems in my own life. Dare I say, uh, it has even helped me become a better person and know how to give people around me what they need emotionally more effectively without violating my own boundaries. Plus, Robert Sapolsky, the neuroendocrinologist who wrote the book, he's very smart and quite funny. It's worth reading or listening to as an audiobook, or you can watch some of Dr. Sapolsky's lectures 
on YouTube. Dr. Robert Sapolsky, also on YouTube, worth checking out. Anyway, there's a section in the book about how improving predictability and social support can decrease stress and subsequently pain and anxiety. So yeah, sometimes just explaining why something is happening in a kind and caring way sometimes that can be really helpful, even if you don't solve the root of the problem right away. This particular patient, she was quite grateful that I took the time to talk her through this. I was glad I had the time. You know, I don't always have the time uh, during a busy day to go into detail and really sit with someone and explain these kinds of things. You know, that's why she got rushed out the door with muscle relaxers by that TMD specialist. There's no economic incentive, or at least a very weak economic incentive in our current dental care system to properly address these issues. That's why I'm making these videos. I'm trying to set up a sustainable incentive structure for myself to invest time in spreading this information and make our dental care system a smidge more efficient in the process. Those are my lofty goals. So, mm -hmm. how about that? One other thing I want to say about chronic jaw muscle pain before moving on, I mentioned that a lot of these patients think I'm some kind of a quack when I start talking about this, you know. I don't clench my teeth, I don't grind my teeth, the tooth man lying to me. I am the tooth man and uh, I promise that I am trying to tell the tooth and nothing but the tooth, so help me mouth. And the other thing I should mention is that like, you know, it's not easy to ask somebody like, hey, do you have like, stress and anxiety and depression issues and stuff like you know some people are okay talking about that stuff with a medical provider some people aren't i'll be honest i wasn't comfortable talking about any of this stuff for a long time okay like back when i was a teenager when i was you know in my early 20s mid 20 mid 20s i started to get more comfortable talking about this stuff but until then it was like i'm just gonna be depressed and uh, not tell anyone you know so i get it like i understand how it's like a little hard to put your emotional crud out there, uh, you know, but sometimes, you know, those discussions in the right context with a, a medical provider can be really helpful. So even if you don't notice clenching or grinding with your teeth, sometimes it's more helpful to think of this in terms of resting muscle tone, right? Just normal, regular muscle tone throughout the day. Like, are the muscles tensed? Like maybe you're not audibly gritting your teeth, but stress may be causing you to tense your jaw muscles without thinking about it throughout the day. You know, and I think I used this analogy earlier in the video, but I'll repeat it here. If you've ever like clenched your fist and someone pisses you off, or you know, you kind of tighten your butt cheeks when you're nervous, right? Whoa, what's going on? You know, that's, uh, imagine what would happen if you clenched your butt all day long. You'd probably be pretty sore. Um, <laughs> That kind of stuff happens with your jaw muscles subconsciously, meaning not at the conscious level. You're not consciously aware that you're doing it. So by definition, that means without conscious awareness, you aren't aware that you're doing it. I like to use the analogy, imagine if you held a small stack of books out in front of you all day. Now, really these books aren't particularly heavy right now. Uh, this isn't much of a strain, but if I tried to do this for, you know, 10 minutes, my arms would start to get pretty sore. And if I try to do this for several hours or an entire day, my shoulders and forearms would hate me. <laughs> really, really hate me. So you could be holding your jaw in an awkward posture that's tensing the muscles and causing them to strain in a way that just isn't natural or normal or healthy over a long, you know, a chronic period of time. So, if your dentist has ruled out a problem with any of your teeth and the jaw joint is healthy, that leaves us with the jaw muscles most of the time. So, sometimes a chronic issue like this is a warning sign that something is chronically off kilter in your life. I'm not trying to go all hippy dippy spirit healer, uh, you know, but just try to be open-minded about this possibility if you're having jaw pain. You know, you can injure your shoulder or your back with repetitive use injuries, uh, with poor form at the gym, or from bad posture. Same thing with your jaw. So, if I've convinced you that there is validity to what I'm saying, uh, I've written more on this topic in my article linked below in the video description. That's on medium.com. Uh, the article on medium is called 
my dentist says I grind my teeth. Do I actually need a night guard? Uh, if I figure it out, if I figure it out, I'll uh, post. I'll also put a link to the article uh, with a YouTube card thing on the screen somewhere uh, in this region, maybe. Right? I think it, no, I think it would. I think it would show up here. YouTube card. Look for. Look for that in this area. I'm gonna try to set that up. Um, within that article, you can search for the section I titled Common Chronic Issue, colon, Chronic Muscle Pain. Read through that. There's a lot of details in there about how you can address this type of pain. More details than I could fit into this video. If you have chronic jaw muscle pain, really it can involve working with several healthcare providers, including your dentist, but not just exclusively your dentist. You know, so read that. You can share your experience with this in the comments here on YouTube and also on medium.com. Maybe it'll be helpful advice for others who are dealing with similar issues. Thank you for that, for uh, contributing to the group. And last thing, I should definitely say this, wearing a night guard is typically not the solution if you're dealing with chronic jaw muscle pain, right? Extended time jaw muscle pain where it's been lingering for a long time. Usually a night guard is not what we really need here. You may need a night guard for other reasons to be protecting your teeth, but it's not gonna typically resolve the muscle pain issue, at least not just by itself. There's more at play here that we have to work on. I think I made that clear with all this other stuff I was talking about, but I wanna make sure I stated that clearly. Chronic jaw muscle pain, a night guard is only a small piece of the puzzle to fixing that issue. All right, so we've talked about protecting teeth from cracking. We've talked about stopping teeth from wearing down and uh, ruining your smile. We've talked about short-term muscle pain. Very briefly, I just touched on chronic muscle pain. Again, more of that in the article in the video description. Last one, last reason I'm gonna talk about for wearing a night guard. What could be going on with your jaw joint, right, that could justify using a night guard? Did you know your jaw joint is the most complex joint in the human body? I, that might not even be true. I don't know. Your shoulders and knees are pretty are pretty fancy, um, but the jaw joint is a is a fairly fancy one. So deserves some consideration. Uh, are you ready to learn everything in the world there is to learn about the human jaw joint? Now, realistically, you're probably here as your jaw clicks or pops or gets stuck, and you wanna know, what's up with that? Why does that happen? Here's the basic rundown. There is a disc of special cartilage in between your jawbone and your skull. And uh, normally, when you open, your jaw, at first, it just sort of rotates on that disc, but then when you open wide, it actually slides forward and surfs on that disc. That disc continues to sit in between your jawbone and skull and helps your jawbone slide forward for you to open wider. So first it's rotation, then it's translation. Wider, wider. So what happens is if you have some sort of an injury or if something gets a little wonky with your jaw muscles and it pulls that disc out of position so that it's not in between the jawbone and the skull when you open, that's when you get your clicking and your popping and your crepitus, which is that sort of Rice Krispies crickly crackly noise. Are you guys hearing? I don't know if you guys are gonna hear this. The clicking and the popping and the crepitus, all of that is actually okay as long as it doesn't hurt. You know, I get all kinds of crickles and crackles with my uh, shoulders here. This didn't used to happen until I started swimming, so now I can make noises with my arms. So yeah, my, my shoulders and my back, you know, crack and pop all the time, but no orthopedic surgeon is telling me to, you know, go and surgically replace my shoulder joint, you know, they're fine. They don't hurt, they just snap, crackle, and pop. It's okay. So the crackling noises are from the jawbone rubbing on tissues other than the disc that is supposed to sit between the jaw and the skull. The other point, if your jaw gets stuck when you try to open, that's because it has slipped off the disc. A lot of times the disc slips forward in front of the jawbone. Sometimes your dentist may be able to help you manipulate your jaw back onto the disc, but you'll want to restrict how wide you open for a while in the future, or the disc may pop back out of position. 
You may be worrying about what is happening when your jawbone is rubbing against tissues other than the disc. The good news is your body is very adaptive and typically adjusts to this situation pretty well over time. A good analogy is how our hands form calluses. If you work with your hands a lot, the tissue toughens up. The same kind of thing happens in the joint space when your jawbone is rubbing on tissue. So we actually have research that has pretty thoroughly demonstrated that in the vast majority of cases, even jawbone rubbing up against skull bone, right? Bone against bone up in the joint will become painless over time. It can take up to a year or so, but you don't necessarily need a surgical intervention to correct the jaw joint if your disc gets out of alignment. All right, so all of that being said, what if it does hurt? Okay, so your dentist may need to make you a special temporary night guard that moves the jaw bone forward uh, off the tissues it is pushing or rubbing against in the joint space. The same way that you would wear crutches to take pressure off a sprained ankle while it heals, that's what that type of night guard would do. You move the jaw forward, you move the jaw bone off of the tissues back here that it's pinching on, and you let that heal. You know, it's like crutches for a sprained ankle, same concept. Uh, most of these pull the jaw forward a little to take pressure off the tissues at the back of the joint space. So there can be consequences with this type of night guard uh, where you get changes to your bite, the way your upper and lower teeth relate to each other. But depending on the amount of pain you're having in the jaw joint, that might just be the way the cookie crumbles, right? That might be an acceptable outcome for you, right? So the goal with this type of a guard, a guard that's being made to help you with joint pain, is for it to be temporary, right? You don't surgically implant a crutch in your armpit, right? You use it while you need it, while the you know leg or the ankle or whatever is healing, and then you slowly get back to normal function. But you also don't want to be the person who you know ditches the crutches and then goes and runs a marathon the next day, right? You want to ease back into it, right? You, you want to be functioning as best you can within painless limits. That's the name of the game. Take it slow with the recovery. Don't overdo it. So this is just an interesting side note. The anterior deprogrammer, the small night guard that I talked about in the acute muscle pain section, the one that's just a little one that fits in between your front teeth and helps stop you from clenching as hard with your jaw muscles in the short term, that anterior deprogrammer guard will actually make joint pain worse in a lot of situations because it kicks the jawbone back harder into the tissues that it's pinching on. So if you put in an anterior deprogrammer and all of a sudden you're getting a lot of pain back by your ear, you might have a jaw joint issue that could be diagnostic of that. Also, if you try like an over-the-counter guard, you know, night guard, and you put that in and all of a sudden it makes the pain a lot worse back in the joint space, that could be an indication that you have a joint inflammation issue from a disc being out of alignment. But there is more good news. Compared to muscle pain, jaw joint pain doesn't tend to get progressively worse over time, right? That's good. Usually you adapt and heal, sometimes relatively quickly, on the long end, maybe more like a year. So I spent a lot of time talking about the behavioral and psychological aspects of jaw muscle pain because almost none of my patients have ever been introduced to any of that as a concept and it's basically the only effective way to manage the problem long term and in some cases even resolve it. So if you had to choose between having a jaw joint issue and a jaw muscle issue, at least a chronic one, the jaw joint issue typically easier to fix. So jaw muscle issues, they're more involved. Night guards and pills won't fix them very easily. Read the article on Medium in the video description, it goes into detail. It's gonna take some motivation on your part to change certain aspects of your life to resolve jaw muscle issues if they've become chronic. It's a stress problem, it's often an emotional problem. I know I'm saying that because I've had those kinds of emotional problems myself that have caused these jaw muscle pain issues. Sometimes you gotta take a look at the man in the mirror, you know? Figure out what you're doing that isn't working and do something different, right? I'm not trying to be judgmental, I'm just trying to give you the straight, honest to goodness take a look at the man in the mirror make a change sometimes stuff you thought was super important in life just isn't right you don't have to worry about it as much as you thought you did even when you really thought it was even when that seems impossible for all you jaw joint pain sufferers watching this it's a less common issue jaw muscle pain is way more common jaw joint issues are 
way less common, they're easier to resolve, and you typically don't need surgery to fix it. You may need a temporary night guard, you will get better, your body will heal, life goes on. It's very rare that you would need some kind of reconstructive jaw surgery, orthognathic surgery to fix a jaw joint issue. It's just not that commonly done these days, most of the time. Typically very conservative treatment is going to be effective for handling a jaw joint issue. We're almost home fam, here we go, we're almost there. So, uh, this was a long video. Uh, if you haven't figured it out, there's chapter headings in the uh, video description, so you can skip around to the sections you care about the most. There's a link to an article on Medium, I've said it a thousand times, but I don't know which parts of the video you're watching, so link to an article on medium.com I wrote that gives more details on each of these topics. If you got some value out of this video, please like, subscribe, mail me your newborn child, you know, whatever. Uh, you want to do. If you really like me, uh, you can go to my website, anotherlazymillennial.com, and uh, give me your email address, right? I do stand-up. I'm collecting email addresses so I can tell people about future shows, comedy, albums, and things like that that I aspire to create. So in summary, night guards can protect your teeth from cracking. They can stop your teeth from wearing down, from grinding. They can save you an insane amount of time and money over the long run and hassle there if you have that uh, grinding issue the way that I do. I wear a guard every night, right? I think I said that earlier. In some cases, they can temporarily relieve muscle pain, uh, but only for a few weeks typically. It's not a solution for chronic muscle pain. And they can help your jaw joint heal up if it's injured. Again, only needed on a temporary basis. Is it all that simple? Why was this video so long if that's all I really needed to say? Well, you know, the rest of it was filled with a lot of other, what I think are juicy details, you know, to help you trust me, trust what I'm saying and understand it a little better if you want to. And the thing is, is like, you know, can you imagine if I had to explain all of this to you in a dental office in 10 minutes time? You know, it's, it's impossible, right? I've got to diagnose things, I gotta go through all, talk you through all your signs and symptoms, take your history, do all my diagnostic tests, rule out the things that aren't happening. And then the other problem is, is the only way I'm getting paid most of the time is if I make you a night guard or put a crown on your tooth. So, um, but a lot of times you don't need that. Um, so obviously I'm not going to do it, right? That would be very unethical to recommend someone need something and have a procedure or something done that they don't need. But, there is that bad incentive in the system. Uh, there's, there's no incentive in the system for me to sit down and talk to you for an extended period of time and give you this kind of counseling. So I'm trying to do it through a YouTube video and then you can watch it at your own leisure and get the information that way. I'm trying to create incentives to fill gaps in our healthcare system that I don't think are properly addressed in a clinical environment. Right, that's what I'm doing with a lot of these videos. Maybe this will help somebody. I hope it helps you out. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Thank you for watching, I do really appreciate it. Uh, all right, so just, uh, I don't know, just hug somebody you love, uh, high five a dog, spin kick a cat. See you later. That could be a song, right? High five a dog, spin kick a cat. Hug somebody you love. <laughs> I don't clench my teeth. I don't grind my teeth. The tooth man lying to me. All right, this next jaw muscle exercise, what you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna stand in. You're gonna, you're gonna wanna bend down and then just uh, while you're tensing your jaw, just give yourself a couple of these right on the butt. Just, just spank yourself. It's fine. It's comfortable. Just a couple of these. <laughs> No, please don't. Do that was absurd. That was... This guy's... Okay, I'm starting to get concerned. <laughs> no, that's uh, that's called the spank prank. It's, uh, it's a big trend on YouTube. All the YouTube creators are doing it, right? It's where you try to trick your audience into spanking themselves in their, uh, in their living room at home. So, <laughs> you can try that. Uh, it's a hashtag spank prank. <laughs> that could be a song, right? High five a dog. Spin kick a cat. I want you to feel more confident that your teeth are in good hands. I'll take Jesus of the anus for 1200, Trebek. Hug somebody you love. You don't deserve me at my best. Shove your hands in your mouth. High five a dog. Spin kick a cat. Hug somebody you love. <laughs>
that's the goal for this video is just like get Justin Bieber or somebody famous like that to sing that song. That would be fun, right? High five a dog, spin kick a cat, hug somebody you love. High five a dog, spin kick a cat, hug somebody you love. I don't know, we could probably, come on internet, let's get Justin Bieber to sing that. <laughs> come on Justin, just sing the song. And uh, Justin Bieber should sing that song, and then more people will learn about how to fix their jaws. I don't see what's wrong with that. High five a dog. High five a dog. Spin, kick, a cat. Hug somebody you love.